Hello and welcome to The Great Ooze. It's a river here in Ely in Cambridgeshire and it was the start point for a most spectacular journey that made for so much video footage I've divided the trip into two parts. This video is all about the initial journey from Ely to Cambridge, a trip marked by wind, rain and an excellent breakfast on board. And this is the vessel Narrowboat Scholar Gypsy, named after a poem by Matthew Arnold. Here's its captain, Simon Judge, a veteran of these waters and indeed of unusual narrowboat journeys. We started out early doors, Simon untying the bow and stern lines before pushing us off to head south towards Cambridge. We were ultimately going to go where few narrowboats have ever been, a bit of water that most of the time you're not permitted to go on. But first we had to get there, and that meant 17 miles or 5 hours or so of cruising. Gently we slipped our mooring and began to chug through Ely. There are some big beasts moored here, the ooze being a proper river with depth and width to float such craft. What lovely homes these must make! It was a very blustery day and the forecast was for rain. Barely had we set off than Simon laboured over the stove, sorting out breakfast for all aboard, for I was not the only guest and yes there was someone steering the boat. We were going fast for a narrow boat, but not fast enough for this cruiser clearly, who made a polite and swift passing manoeuvre. The rail line from Ely to Cambridge runs right alongside. There was an arctic blast whipping up chop on the water. Hats, scarves and mittens a necessity when outside. That weather forecast was looking increasingly accurate. Even the swans had tucked themselves up for warmth. Moorings on the ooze are, I think, confusing, some being run by the Environment Agency, some by local councils and others by the Great Ooze Boating Association. These, for example, are Environment Agency moorings at Little Thetford. Just beyond those moorings, at Pope's Corner, the ooze joins the River Cam, which flows through Cambridge. The ooze bears off to the west. The Cam continues south, as did we. Me. Past the brilliantly named Fish and Duck Marina, which sounds more like an English pub than a place to moor your boat. Inevitably the rains came and I hid inside where it was warm and dry. Well, no point getting the camera lens wet, you see. The stove was extremely toasty. Look how I continued to film for your enjoyment, from inside of course.
At the village of Upware, you find the Five Miles From Anywhere pub, which is pretty accurately named. Here again the river splits, bearing off left at reach load or right to continue along the cam. That's reach load and you can just see in the distance a metallic structure which is a guillotine lock taking boats onto commissioner's drain. There's another EA visitors mooring. They tend to have a 48 hour limit. The rain ceased, thankfully, with bluish skies and calmer waters, although sadly this was not to last. We went past Tip Tree Marina. Is or was there a tree that tipped here? I do not know. We were still about 11 miles from Jesus Lock at Cambridge, where we'd pause for lunch. But three miles on, we reached the first lock of the day, Bottisham Lock. That's a pumping station, draining water to or possibly from Bottisham Load. After this lock, our Environment Agency Waterways licence would no longer be valid and you need one instead from the CAM conservators. We startled some ducks as Simon dropped the crew off to work the lock and then he steered the boat in. Notice the guillotine gate at the far end. Both sets of gates, upper and lower, are operated by push-button controls, which are self-explanatory and provoke these hydraulic arms into action. That's the top gate, showing the difference between the two water levels. The way this works is that the gate rises vertically on a chain, just like a guillotine, although hopefully without the slicing descent. Buttons were again pressed to open sluices and let water in at the top. While we waited for the boat to rise, two familiar faces appeared on the other side of the lock. Look, it's Joe and George from Minimal List. So we used that one. Um, we used to no one's great surprise, George was carrying his ball. <laughs> Hi George, how are you? Just don't drop your ball, George. With the water levels equalised, the end gate could rise. Above the lock, a string of boys to stop boats going over the weir and a rather nice set of moorings. We headed out. Hmm, I recognise that boat.
Normally, the swans know you're coming and move, even if reluctantly. But when they're bottom-up, distracted by food, I did wonder if carnage was about to ensue. Luckily not. And the cormorants weren't planning on getting mown down either. Here's the Cam Sailing Club. Just around the corner is the headquarters of the Cam Conservators who manage this length of the river. That's their weed removal boat moored alongside. Um, I've got a cross bed. Oh, right. bed's at sun. I've got a side hatch, so it's all compliant. Three miles further and lock number two presented itself. This is Bates Bite Lock. You can see why you wouldn't want to come over a weir in a boat. In we went, just the same as before. The rise is almost imperceptible, but rise it did until the end gate could be opened. I cannot be alone in finding this bit a smidge tense. Few. By this point we were entering the outskirts of Cambridge, marked by a pedestrian and cycle bridge followed immediately by a railway bridge. It rained again, worse than before, all the way into the middle of the city. <laughs> oh, you lost the phone in Cambridge, you? Yeah, I, I can show you which college is. Here's the newly renamed Equiano Bridge, honouring an African writer whose book about his life helped make slavery illegal in Britain in 1807. Okay. <sighs> Rowing, as you probably know, is big business in Cambridge. It's practically compulsory in the city, along with cycling. Someone has clearly stocked up for winter. <laughs> the site of Victoria Street Bridge meant we were mere yards from our lunch stop and, more importantly, Jesus Lock, the point that normally you cannot go beyond in a powered boat, it's prohibited. But in winter, with permission, you can, and that was our plan. But first a break, and with the rain clouds behind us, all was very promising for our trip onto the so-called backs. Join us in the next video for this very rare journey.